Hello, knowledge seekers. In this episode of 20 Minute Books, we will delve into the warm and insightful text of The Lost Art of Connecting by Susan McPherson, a guide that goes beyond traditional networking. This book shines a light on the human side of professional and personal interactions. With a backdrop of overwhelming digital connections, McPherson brings us back to the heart of what it means to truly engage with others. Stepping into the role of a serial connector, Susan McPherson, founder and CEO of McPherson Strategies, brings her wealth of experience at the crossroads of brands and social good, alongside contributions to renowned publications such as the Harvard Business Review, Fast Company, and Forbes magazines. In the pages of The Lost Art of Connecting, she introduces us to the gather, ask, do method a three-step approach to cultivating meaningful, lasting relationships. It serves as a call to break down the barriers built by technology and fosters a deeper human connection. This book is particularly suited for professionals who yearn to broaden their circles in profound and substantial ways. Individuals looking to enhance their interpersonal skills and anyone who desires to deepen the bonds with people in their lives. Join us as we explore the art that could revolutionize the way you connect with the world around you. The Lost Art of Connecting, the Gather, Ask, Do Method for Building Meaningful Business Relationships. Introduction, Master the Gather, Ask, Do Method to Enrich Your Network and Relationships. Embarking on the journey of networking can feel like navigating a maze with no clear exit. The trepidation of reaching out, the uncertainty of where to begin, and the frustration when connections don't bear fruit are common concerns. But networking need not be an enigma wrapped in a conundrum. Equipped with the right tools and strategies, anyone can transform fleeting interactions into robust, lasting relationships that not only serve professional growth, but also enhance personal fulfillment. Dive deep into the world of authentic connectivity with the Gather, Ask, Do method, a powerful approach designed to cultivate meaningful business relationships. This method stands on the shoulders of a mindset that intertwines professional ambition with the genuine human desire to forge connections that matter. By blending life inside and outside of work, you'll unlock untold opportunities for growth. But how exactly does this transformative method work? It's based on three pivotal actions that subtly shift networking from a transactional exercise to a relational art form. Let's start with gather. Imagine weaving a web of contacts, not through forceful intent, but through organic shared experiences. It means cultivating an environment, both virtual and physical, where connections naturally flourish, seeding the potential for future collaborations. Then there's ask. But it's not just any question that ignites the bond. It's the golden query, how can I help? Offering your aid without the expectation of immediate return positions you as a trusted ally, not a self-serving contact. This question is the gateway to understanding others' needs and empowering them, the bedrock for a mutually beneficial relationship. Finally, do brings forth the importance of trust, earned through actions and not just words. In the realm of connection, trust is a currency, and small exchanges, like five-minute favors, accumulate significant value. These gestures demonstrate reliability and generosity, two pillars upon which strong networks are built. Unveiling this method goes beyond a simple business strategy. It reveals how deeply interconnected our personal happiness and professional success are, with studies hinting at longer, more fulfilled lives for those with thriving social ties. Therefore, the gather ask. Do Method isn't just about networking. It's a framework for cultivating a connected and enriching life. Part 1. Clear Goals. Pave the way for meaningful connections in your professional landscape. Picture this. You've landed the job of your dreams, and today's your big leap into this new world. 
there's a room full of potential connections. The energy is palpable, yet so is the pounding of your heart as a myriad of questions threaten to cloud your judgment. It's a situation many of us can relate to, the cocktail of excitement and nerves when faced with the task of networking. But fear not, for clarity in your purpose can cut through the fog of anxiety and set the stage for meaningful engagement. To build substantial professional networks, clarity in your goals is a beacon that guides the journey. Avid stargazers know the beauty of the constellations in the vast night sky is not a random stroke of chance, but a result of specific stars aligning in a precise pattern. When you venture into professional networking, think of yourself as searching for your personal constellation among the countless stars, connections, in the universe of your industry. Initiate self-reflection at the gather phase. Much like aligning stars, forming meaningful partnerships starts with introspection. Understand your drives and behaviors in personal settings, for they are often mirrored in professional scenarios. Renowned psychotherapist Esther Perel has remarked that interpersonal dynamics cultivated during our formative years accompany us into the adult world, including the workplace. This insight suggests that your work persona is not a separate entity, but rather a continuation of your overall identity, held together by the threads of personal history. With this in mind, it's pivotal to articulate your professional aspirations. Whether it's clinching a new role, seeking a collaborator, or finding a mentor to nurture an idea, knowing precisely what you want is half the battle won. Scribble your objectives down and let them serve as a compass as you venture forth to connect with others. Charting your goals not only builds a scaffold for your networking endeavors, but enables you to discern and prioritize which relationships are worth cultivating. It's a journey from introspection to interaction, where clear aspirations lead to connecting with the right constellations. Part two, cherish the connections you already have. They're key to expanding your network. In the digital age, where social platforms like Facebook, LinkedIn, and Twitter reign, the concept of networking takes on a colossal digital dimension. We're seemingly connected to the world, yet paradoxically, we could be slipping into superficiality, missing out on the true essence of connection, one that's built on genuine human-to-human -human interaction. Amidst the pursuit of networking expansion, it's crucial not to lose sight of the treasures within your existing network. Here's the pivotal insight. Your current network's value is immeasurable, and nurturing it can unlock doors you never knew existed. A profound sense of disconnection has intangibly crept into our workplaces as well. Consider this. A study from Olivet Nazarene University reveals that a mere 15% of American workers count their colleagues as true friends, while a staggering 22% regard them as strangers. This fragmentation not only affects corporate culture, but it also impacts individual networks. As you map out your star-filled professional universe, take time to appreciate the constellations you're a part of, the networks built through existing relationships. Each individual you know is, in fact, a beacon connected to innumerable other stars, and through them, you're connected to a vast array of potential allies and mentors you might never have considered. After setting your business compass, identify the key players within your reach who can elevate your knowledge or whom you can assist in a significant way. Remember, there's immense potential in relationships, even with those who might not directly align with your current objectives. And do not let fear, be it of rejection or discomfort, deter you from casting your net wide. Embrace the possibility that lies within your current sphere. The impact of nurturing positive relationships is profound influencing not just your career trajectory, but also your well-being. Research published in the Journal of Applied Psychology underscores the intricate link between dynamic idea exchange within your immediate network and the innovative energy that ripples out to even distant connections. By enriching your own network, you inadvertently enrich the networks of those around you, creating a virtuous cycle of growth and opportunity. So. As you step forward into the realm of networking, 
do so with a deep respect and attentiveness towards those who are already with you on this journey. For every familiar star in your sky could lead to new galaxies of opportunity, and every friendship has the potential to open yet another constellation of contacts and experiences. Part 3. Authentic bonds grow when you shift from what can I gain to how can I assist. Visualize the all-too-familiar scene at a networking event. A labyrinth of eager individuals with rehearsed elevator pitches, each trying to snag a job offer or attract an investor, all quietly yearning to escape the transactional treadmill. What's glaringly absent in this scenario is the essence of genuine connectivity, supplanted instead by the lingering question, what's in it for me? The truth is, this quid pro quo dynamic, while momentarily beneficial, often fails to cultivate deep, lasting relationships. To step away from this paradigm, one must focus not on personal gain, but on how to be of service to others. Here lies the crux of the matter. Nurturing true connections stems from a genuine desire to assist. In an era where virtual interactions are the norm, the allure of technology can inadvertently promote shallow bonds. Yet, beyond the screen lies the opportunity for a richer tapestry of connection, best woven by personal interactions. When you venture into the ask stage of networking, be courageous enough to take the conversation from pixels to personal. One doesn't need to confine their networking to stiff conventional events. Instead, create your own platforms for interaction, perhaps through community service or a series of casual coffee catch-ups. Start with intimate and manageable settings that lend themselves to relaxed, meaningful conversations. The heart of the matter is intention. As you prepare to reach out to someone, be it through LinkedIn or an email, pause and pivot your perspective from seeking to offering. Mull over the challenges they might be facing and ask, how can I contribute to their journey? It may be through connecting them with a resource, sharing insights, or simply lending an ear to their ideas. Offering assistance with no expectation of immediate reciprocation is a breath of fresh air in the current landscape of networking. It positions you as a collaborator, not a competitor. The power of this shift is profound. Not only are people likely to appreciate your thoughtful gestures and openness, but by adopting a helper's mindset, anxiety dissipates, replaced by a passion for the art of connection. Part 4. Make your request count with a clear, concise, and time-sensitive ask. Recall the triumphant feeling of a resounding yes, echoing in response to a request you've made. Securing a coveted job or achieving budget approval may come to mind. What if you could harness that success rate more often? After all, the very act of asking for help can have us mentally bracing for rejection. But approaching each interaction with positivity, specificity, and defined objectives can change the game. Ensure your pitch hits the mark by being explicit, quantifiable, and designated with a deadline. Take Rona Shah Bing's story as a beacon of successful asks. Founder and CEO of Her Agenda, a digital platform celebrating successful millennial women, Bing started out at just 15 years old, spurred by the disparity she saw in female representation among Fortune 500 CEOs. Her mission was clear. Amplify the narratives of accomplished women to match the renown of figures like Beyonce. Even with youth as a potential barrier, Bing boldly pitched her idea without dwelling on her age, but concentrated on her purpose and the modest time request she sought. This story exemplifies the effectiveness of a well-structured approach. When you extend a request to someone in your network, embody Bing's strategy. Frame your pitch with precise details. What is needed, by when, and why. Limit requests to short durations, a five-minute favor especially for nascent connections. These help keep the ask palatable and respectful of the other person's time, while also conveying your earnestness. For example, instead of a nebulous, can you help me, try, could you glance over my resume and offer feedback by next Tuesday? Or, may I have five minutes of your time to refine my project pitch? By defining your request, 
you create a straightforward path for your contact to assist you. Each succinct, focused ask is more than a mere request. It's an opportunity for engagement that roots deeper into the relationship, fostering a reciprocal investment in one another's goals. So next time you're poised to reach out for help, remember, clarity, conciseness, and time consciousness make for powerful allies in securing those all-important yes responses. Part 5. Forge Meaningful Connections by Mastering the Art of Inquisitive Listening Reflect upon the tapestry of relationships woven into your life. Those deep, enduring bonds that have evolved from initial introductions to cherished connections. It's not merely the passage of time that deepens relationships, but the concerted efforts made along the way. When it comes to enriching your professional encounters, the aim isn't to turn every contact into a best friend, but to elevate these interactions towards substantial, mutually beneficial ones. Establishing more profound connections starts with elevating the dialogue beyond pleasantries to truly engaging exchanges. Let's unravel the key to unlocking deeper connections. Ask incisive questions and listen attentively. Bypass the default small talk and venture into questions that require reflection and sincerity, like, what challenges did you face during the pandemic? Or, what fuels your ambitions? Engaging on this level signals that you're interested in more than just a surface-level interaction. Yet, the potent act of asking these questions is only half the equation. To truly connect, you need to actively listen. Julian Treasure, an expert on sound and communication, advocates for the RASA method. Receive, appreciate, summarize, and ask. As a roadmap to better listening. Start with receive. Employ open body language, direct your gaze and attention to the speaker, and demonstrate full engagement. Follow with appreciate, acknowledging what the other person is saying through nods and verbal affirmations. To ensure mutual understanding, summarize the key takeaways from the conversation, echoing them back to confirm accuracy. Lastly, ask probing questions that delve deeper into the topic at hand. Being an active listener also calls for mental attentiveness. Take mental or literal notes of personal insights shared by your contact. Did they mention a passion project? A pet peeve? This intel is gold for personalizing your help and crafting a thoughtful follow-up. Thus, your approach to forming connections is twofold. Prompt a deeper dialogue through thoughtful questions and provide an empathetic ear. This conscious practice strengthens the fabric of your network, turning casual contacts into confidants and collaborators. Remember, in the world of connection, the most resonant chord is struck not by what you say, but by how well you listen and respond. Part six, cultivate enduring bonds by consistently making your network feel valued. Take inspiration from the story of Lois Weisberg, eminent cultural commissioner of Chicago in the 90s, and an archetypal super-connector. Weisberg seamlessly moved through diverse spheres, including medicine, law, finance, arts, and politics, to foster initiatives that catalyzed Chicago's sociocultural metamorphosis. Her life exemplified the quintessence of the gather-ask-do method, particularly in the transformational power of actively affirming and assisting those in her orbit. Here's the essence for sustaining relationships long-term. Timely follow-ups and genuine care help cement connections. One cardinal rule in relationship building is recognizing and celebrating the intrinsic value of others. It's about real acknowledgement, seeing and expressing appreciation for unique qualities that make each individual stand out, Personalized follow-ups are a testament to your attentiveness and care. Time is your ally when it comes to follow-ups. Act swiftly after that initial encounter. Don't let months elapse and allow the spark of connectivity to dull. A prompt message or note can do wonders in nurturing that newborn bond. Utilize social media or a personal message to convey your enthusiasm about their work or your eagerness to assist. Yet one follow-up does not a lasting relationship make. It's the continuum of care, the regular check-ins, and small acts of kindness. 
be it sharing an article, sending a holiday card, or periodically meeting for a coffee, that build a robust connection over time. If the relationship genuinely matters, these gestures won't seem like chores, but rather joyful exchanges in the dance of connectivity. The crux of the gather, ask-do method lies in the harmonic convergence of work and personal life. It is in the creation of a beautifully interconnected constellation. The approach encourages a symbiotic blend of professional ambition and sincere personal interaction, fostering a network that provides sustenance and enrichment not only in your career but in the broader scope of life. It's about cultivating a community where every individual, including yourself, is celebrated, supported, and cherished. Final summary. In the dynamic task of networking, it's imperative to begin with a phase of introspection and planning, the gather phase. Pin down your networking objectives and delineate the types of connections that align with your ambitions. But mapping out your path is merely the starting point. The real magic of networking unfolds when you engage. Transition into the ask phase, the heart of relationship building. Here, it's your curiosity about others and your capacity to listen that come to the fore. Seize every opportunity to delve into meaningful conversations with thought-provoking questions, showing a genuine interest in those you meet. This is the time to listen, to learn, and to lay the groundwork for a potential bond. But the journey doesn't halt there. What follows is sustained effort. In the do phase, you actively maintain and strengthen the ties you've crafted. Prompt follow-ups after initial encounters signal your genuine interest, while continued engagement over time deepens your rapport. It's in the consistent nurturing of these contacts that casual connections metamorphose into a constellation of enduring relationships. What stands out in this approach to networking is the seamless blend of your professional and personal self. By adhering to the gather, ask, do method, you equip yourself with a frame of mind that fosters authenticity in every interaction, paving the way for a network that not only bolsters career success, but also enriches the very fabric of your life. Thank you for joining me today on this journey of learning and discovery as we explored the insights of another thought-provoking book in our growing library of knowledge. If you've enjoyed our time together, please take a moment to follow our podcast, give us a five-star rating, and share 20-minute books with other knowledge seekers. Your support truly means a lot. Don't forget to join me again in the next episode, where we will delve into another enriching book. Until then, happy reading and happy listening.